<coughs> set up the integral for the area. I uh, just say any integral, maybe you have two different forms. You know, so an integral could be integral with respect to x variable, with respect to y variable. Right? And uh, but the original original uh, uh, formula for the area is mutual, no gender, right? no x and y. <laughs> you can, but you can change it to x, you can change it to y variable, the integral. Okay? So here it is s. Yeah, this is a mutual form. Okay? And the X is a parameter, the S is the arc length of the curve, which you use to generate the surface. Okay? But you, but you cannot use the S variable to evaluate the integral. The reason is, you don't know what is the length of the curve. You don't know what is the R. You cannot express R in terms of S. Okay? So let's look at the starting point and the end point. When x equals one, the y value is going to be something. It's x, x a quarter, okay? Why? Because when x equals one, natural log of one is zero. So just the first term remains. But when x is two, uh, you have to estimate because this is a two square over four minus one half natural log two, which is one of, okay? And uh, clearly. This is a positive number, okay? Positive number. Uh, why it's positive number? Who can quickly tell me? <laughs> Without using calculator. Okay, the reason is, the reason is, uh, this actually, this is actually is one minus this natural log of square two, right? And the square root of two is a number less than e. Natural log of e is going to be one. So natural log of square root of two is less than. So na natural log of square root of two is less than one. So one minus smaller number is positive. Yes. No, y equals one quarter because because if you plug one for x into natural log, it's gone. Natural log of one is zero. Okay, so that's so this is a positive because when you sketch the graph, you really need to know where you're going to put the point, right? So when x equals one, y is a quarter. It's somewhere here, very close. When x equals two, y is somewhere. I don't care whether it's how large of this number, somewhere like that. Okay, and then I draw the curve. We can draw a strict line, that's fine. Because this is the rotation above the x-axis, okay? Then you rotate, okay? And uh, this is the original curve. The original curve, we use the original curve, okay? This is the original curve. Take an arbitrary point, the x and the y, and this is the radius, right? Okay, so from, uh, from the picture, you can tell the radius of y, i equals y, okay? And the ds is going to be, you have two options, but I clearly we should use a, a x variable, right? Yeah, because you're given y, y equals something, depends on x. So it's very natural, right? So you differentiate, uh, so the, the integral, the area is going from zero, x is from one to two, right? And the two pi and uh, y, and that's the first step. Okay, that's the first step. Then you, you put the details, so what is the y? Y should be expressed in terms of x. It's just quarter of x squared minus one half natural log of x. And then you have to differentiate y with respect to x. That will be x over two minus one over two x squared dx, okay? Now, you can get rid of the radical here, I guarantee it. But I'm not going to do that, okay? You can evaluate, possibly you can evaluate this integral if you want. Okay? But let's set up an integral, that's it. So you begin with uh, the, the formula, it's a mutual formula. You know, it just depends on x, the arc length, 
and then you change it to the X variable or change it to the Y variable. Okay. Uh, why you need to draw the picture? And because some problems, uh, you cannot just use a formula, very specific formula in the book because you don't understand the formula, specific formula in the book, it's harder to get right into the Okay. So the second problem you, uh, I'm going to ask you to do. Uh, so this is a graph. Uh, this graph is per parabola opens downward. Okay. And the x is between zero and the one. Okay. So I want to a set up an integral. For the area, the surface is uh, is obtained. The surface is determined by by this function. Rotation is about uh, the y-axis. Okay. Then I also will ask you to set up integral. Uh, for the surface, if the, sur if the rotation is about x axis. Okay, but let's do this. We want to set up two integrals. One is using the x variable, one is using y variable. Let's try this, okay? Two integrals. Okay, two integrals. Using the x variable or using the y variable. Okay, can you do that? Yeah, we actually want to get two integrals. Using the X variable and using the Y variable. Don't don't need to evaluate the integral, okay? So A, uh, yeah, that's why right. uh, using the X variable, okay. First of all, right? Then you get a formula using the Y variable. So let's put a picture here. Step one, draw the graph, 3D graph, 3D graph. Okay, you can do that, 3D graph. Of course, it's, uh, you are working on a two-dimension piece of paper, so you have to draw the graph. Looks like a 3D graph, okay? Okay, this is a, Draw a couple lines, circles, then you get a 3D. It's a rotation, it's very important that the rotation is about Y axis. If you draw the graph, it's a surface uh, about X axis, totally different uh, uh, answers. Are you done with uh, the integral? Draw the graph, ask yourself, okay, you must draw the graph, okay? If you don't draw the graph, the immediately you give me the impression you don't understand, fully understand this type of problems. Okay, you mark the radius. Okay. Even you know, even you're lucky you gave me a right formula for the for the injury. So this is the original curve, right? This is the original curve. You take arbitrary point, x and the y, they're related by this equation. This is their radius, it's r. That, yeah, this is the radius. So from the picture, once you have a picture, it's clear that the radius is going to be i equals x, not a y. Okay, that's a, that's why it's important you mark the radius. I is not going to be a, a, a y, it's going to be x. Yeah, right? The x coordinate gives the length, gives it the, gives the radius, okay? Okay, so then it's up to you. You want to use the x variable, then ds is going to be one plus dy over dx square dx, right? You want to use the x variable for the integral. That's it. You don't do anything about the R because it's already expressed in terms of X. So the integral, the uh, error is two pi R dS, 
and you change it to the x variable x variables from 0 to 1 2 pi what is r i is x what is ds ds 1 plus the derivative y with respect to x is negative 2 x squared dx that. that's it right you don't have to move the original equation so I, I just asked you to set up an integral. Don't waste time. Okay. Don't waste time. Because this will be another problem how to evaluate integral. This is a difference, right? We do have an exercise for evaluating integral, right? Substitution is belong to what? Some substitution problem belong to mass 165. So I'm not going to test you here how to evaluate integral. Okay. My focus is to to set up integral here, yeah, set, setting up integral. All right, so using the y variable, if you want to use a y variable, what you can do? Sometimes you can do that, sometimes you cannot switch. Depend, right? So still the same uh, surface. Okay, and it still has the same point. Right? And the relationship is given. So clearly the y variable, y changes from zero to to one, right? Also. Okay. So radius is still x. Nothing's changed. Ds is still the same ds, but this time you want to take dy out because you want to use the y variable. Okay, so nothing been changed. So the area is going to be the integral from zero to one, two pi x ds. But I have to express everything inside the integral in terms of x, in terms of y, and now x is not y, right? So x depends on y when the point moves around the curve. Okay, so you have to solve for x. And x and y related by above equation, you can solve for x, right? x squared equals one minus y, x equals square one minus y. That. Okay, so the integral and then dx over dy, uh, if we evaluate, I think it's minus one, something like that. I can quickly write down that. Can you do that? <laughs> the, the derivative of square one minus x. Okay, all right. So now you can put it back, x is one minus y, and this will be negative one, two square one minus y, square plus one dy. Okay. And actually, if we express it in this form, it'll be much easier to solve the problem. Okay, why? Because when you, when you, uh, when you, uh, Let's look at it. Okay, we can evaluate it quickly. Yes. No, the, the, the bound for the y variable is already clear from the picture from zero to one. Yeah, you know, sometimes you have to find out, but this is a parabola. The vertex on the top is, is a zero one coordinate. So I know, I see that already. So the y variable, the, the lower bound f bound for the y variable is clear. So I just write it's the same, zero one, yeah. And uh, and this will be one for one minus y plus y, right? And then you combine those two square root, and you get one quarter plus one minus y. Okay, this is a linear term, right? Inside. Okay, and they actually can get the exact value of the integral. Yeah, you can get the exact value. <clears throat> well, this is a, uh, this part is five over four, right? Okay. So you can, uh, you can let u to be five over four minus y. And then when y is zero, it's a five over four. When y is one, it's quarter, two pi. And u to the one half, dy is negative du, okay? Then the anti-derivative of that function 
is going to be 2 over 3 u to the 3 over 2. And then you have a 2 pi here, right? Yeah. And then you evaluate at the two end point, but there's a negative sign here. Uh, so there's a negative sign here. So eventually you will get a four over three pi, five over four to the three over two, minus four pi over three, and a quarter of three over two. That's a stranger number, but this is the exact area. Of that, of that surface. <clears throat> now, let's continue. Work on the same problem. Okay, the function is not that complex. So I want you to do the following problem: set up an integral for the area, and still the curve is still the same curve. But this rotation is about the x axis. Okay. Okay, draw the graph first, right? The graph is already there. But this time it's the rotation is about the x-axis, right? So this is the way with the graph. It's different from the one we we start. Okay. Can you, yeah, I, I, I suggest you to consider the my way to solve the problem. You mark the point, okay, with coordinates, x and y, and then they have to tell me what is the radius, okay, because in the formula it's 2 pi r ds. The reason we want to do that because it's not necessarily to be x, it could be another horizontal line. So you have to calculate the radius, okay? In this case, for yeah, for the given point, what is the radius? Okay, the radius is this time is a y variable. Okay, the radius is a y variable. Okay, then it depends what variable you're going to use. You use y variable, or use x variable to solve the problem. If you want to use the y variables, then you don't need to change the y to another. Thing. It's already there. Okay. So let's see. We can use the y variable, right? No problem. That will be dx dy squared plus one dy. Okay. Then you have to solve x in terms of y. No problem, right? Because the same curve is described by these two different equations. Okay. So when you differentiate, and this is going to be as uh, the derivative is negative, okay, we get the same thing like that. So this time that the area is going to be integral from zero to one because the y is from zero to one. And two pi y, you don't need to worry about that. Then, all right, so this is the formula. You can also use the x variable to express uh, the integral and for the area of the surface. Right, I'm not going to spend more time on that. Uh, yeah, another formula. Yeah, if you use that, uh, this is the first part, right? If you use the x variable, then ds is going to be 1 plus dy over dx squared. Right? 
then the area is going to be 2 from 0 to pi. And here's the i is still y, okay? Then you have to express everything in terms of x variable. Since y is uh, uh, 1 minus x squared, and that will be 2x squared dx. See, you can use a computer to verify those two integrals give you the same variable. Okay. If you know how to use a software like a Mathematica or, or MATLAB, okay, or, or, or Maple, those three, yeah, any of them, you just know how to enter the integral, then you click a return, you should, maybe the computer has not given you the values. Okay, sorry, it's not way. Then you have to add another command, numeric value. Then you get a numerical value, and you, you compare both, you find out the same. Okay? But it's hard to tell right now, those two integrals give the same value. They're totally different, right? Yeah, uh, so the formula, I hope you know why this formula is true, okay? This formula is true because we, we if this is an arbitrary surface, okay, what we did here is we, we calculate this tiny small pieces, okay? <clears throat> and the surface area, that small pieces, is we call it dA, that's just 2 pi r dS. Okay, so radius is r, then this part is dS. Okay, so you, uh, this is just a portion of, of a cone. Okay, and if you know the, uh, if you know the, the distance between those two points, dS, then if you know the radius, oh, then 2 pi r dS by elementary method, you can show that this is the area. So you add them together, this means integral, then you get total area, okay? So area is surface speaking, like something like that, In, okay? Integral means add all together, tiny bit areas, okay? That's the reason you get two pi r ds, okay? Uh, so today's topic is section 8.3 center of mass. Okay. How do you how do you determine the center of mass? Okay. That's an interesting question. So you are given so first of all we have to figure out the the, the, uh, the, the one dimensional case, the discrete area. Okay. Along the coordinate line, I want to tell the location of the core of the center of mass, right? Along the coordinate line I have a bunch of points, okay? So this is, yeah, this is about mass, okay? And the coordinates is x1, then m2, x2, and sometimes here, x3, m3, and accumulate mn and xn, okay? So you have n points. Uh, I know the coordinates, those are the coordinates. Okay, and uh, somewhere, okay, the center is somewhere. So we want to know where it is. The possibility is here. This is the center, okay? Has coordinate x bar, okay? If you, if you put a support at that point, then it will be balanced because this is the center, okay? So we want to find out the formula. The formula, the standard formula is going to be, first of all, um, you have a, yeah, uh, <clears throat> the idea is that you have a total mass, okay? So M, you add them together, it's going to be uh, Ni from one to Mi, okay? So the idea is uh, the coordinate of the center of mass is going to be um, 
is going to be, uh, you can, let me write. Yeah. It's going to be the mi, m, and xi. Okay. That is given. Okay. It also can be uh, written in that form. So that's the key formula. We're going to use to find the sense of piece of region in two dimensional uh, space. Okay. Okay. Uh, okay. Well, uh, if you have a density function right how to find yeah so this is the first question we apply this calculus idea so uh rho this is a density function okay so somewhere maybe heavier maybe uh, uh you know maybe like okay so it's so x is between a and the b how to find the center of the mass, okay? We know the density, right? So we have to use a calculus idea to do the problem. What I'm gonna do is, center should be somewhere here, right? Let's find the formula for ourselves. If you have a density, it's continuous data, not just like a discrete data in the heaven, right? At, you know, you have n points, right? So we generalize this above formula to the next one. Then what you do is use an arbitrary partition, okay? And you you look at you you cut the whole line into many pieces, okay? So the ice interval, yeah. Look at the ice interval, right? So this is a this is a ice piece. The ice piece, and uh, let's look at the mesh. Let's look at the the, the mesh. Okay, so this is a this is a, a mi. Okay, is about is about the value of the function of an arbitrary point in this interval and multiplied by the length. Okay. Okay, so here, xi star is an arbitrary point in this interval. Because it's, a, it's not constant, right? But you can think the in, sub-interval is so small, the density function is almost a constant, so you can take the arbitrary period value. So it's clear that the, ma the mass of that piece, okay, is going to be the density function times the length. Okay. So add them together, right? So add them together, x bar should be, you view this whole line, right? That's a, you know, as like you have a n pieces there, okay? Each piece, they have a mass mi. So this is going to be mi and x i divided by Okay, should be like that, right? It's a you're given the continuous density function, but but you 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 view this material, whatever. So as a consists of consists yeah consisting of uh, n pieces, okay, n points. At each point, there there's you know each point has a mass of mi so you you plug them into the formula okay so let's see what do we get the bottom part is going to be the sum i from one right m is just mi right so rho xi star delta xi the top part is going to be xi rho xi star 
delta xi. But I can choose a right end point, not necessarily left end point. It's continuous function. I can, I can, uh, I, I can let x i star to be x i. Then if I'm doing like that, then I get x i rho x i delta x i right, and here. Okay then we take the limit as n approaches infinity in other words delta xi all uniformly approaches zero the limit is the integral from a to b rho of x dx and this is the integral from a to b x rho of x dx so this is a formula uh, for the for the scent of path Okay, this is how do we get the formula. Okay, so if we know the density function, we can evaluate the integral, two integrals, and we get the, the center of length. Okay, for example, uh, if the density function is going to be just x, right, x is between zero and one. So in other words, uh, this piece is getting heavier, heavier, right? Right? That's the excesses. So somewhere, yeah, maybe you can draw like that. Okay. So it's getting heavier, heavier when X increases. So somewhere the center of mass should be somewhere here. Let's find out the coordinate. Okay. So according to the formula, uh, you have to evaluate two integrals. So write down the formula first. Integral from zero to one, x dx. Integral from zero to one, x times x dx, right? All right. So the, the, the entire derivative of the bottom side is going to be from zero to one. Here's a one third x cubed from zero to one. Okay. I got the numerate, I got one third, the denominator I get one half. So after I simplify, I get two thirds. That's a reasonable. Two thirds is a number larger than one half, which is going to be on the, on, yeah, close to the one. And you look at the picture, yes, yeah, this should be the same. The coordinate of the center of mass. Uh, the challenging part is it's a two dimensional region. Okay, how can I find the center? Like, a, if you know the, like the United States, right? <laughs> Where is it go? Right? That's the center of the mass, right? Assuming the density is the same. There are two types of centers we talk about. You have a density of the population, right? So find the point somewhere. You know, forget Alaska, right? We just focus on Maryland, okay? And the, where is the center of uh, of the population of the United States? You know, the density part, right? Another issue, another problem. Assuming, forget, yeah. Assuming this is a density, it's always the same. We have to talk about it for called geographic center. Mass. Okay, I don't know. I nobody mentioned that. Okay, so question how do you find it? Right, these days we can use uh, 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 the whole picture, you know, using satellite, we can get all the data. So I think uh, people can find out easily the center okay, of the country, and then you put. Uh, <laughs> Some mark here the center, right? Yeah. So maybe you can find out the internet already. Somebody find out. All right. So this is a picture. Okay. How can I uh, find the center? The center has two coordinates. Okay. One coordinate is uh, 
is x bar and the second coin y bar. So my understanding is x bar should be the center of the of the mass on the uh, on the uh, on the x axis when you when the whole p whole region collapse to to the x axis. Okay, so and you get a density function actually yeah, here, right? If you all collapse, then somewhere is heavier. You know, this is much heavier as area. That's right. And the collapse projected to to the x axis. So the density, the density along the axis is the length of of that piece, right? So it's a lens, okay? This is the lens of this cross section. Then if we, if we, then it's clear, right? So it's going to be total is the integral from, if here's A and the B, A and the B, it's just L and X, DX. And this is density function here is A and B, X, L and X, DX. You write on the formula right away, okay? Just that we already solved the problem in dim one dimension case. So the idea is that this, this, this whole P is projected to the x axis. And uh, if, uh, if the cross section, the length of the cross section is, is, is larger than more dense, more density than that area. So the density action, density function should be the length. The time some constant, okay? The length of this cross section. And uh, how to find the y axis, how to find the y coordinate, you have to do the project. You have to do the same, but then you have to project it to that, you know, the same region, right? But you have to project it to the y axis. Okay, and this is a y. And that would be L of Y. So Y bar is going to be the integral from C to D, L of Y, DY. But the problem is, here's the problem. The problem is sometimes the region is described by a function. It's harder to calculate the cross section. Okay. The length of cross section at the point y, but it's easy to find l and x, but maybe not easy to find l and y. So how do you change the integral? But this part is the same. Those two are the same. That gives the same area. This is actually the area of the region. Okay. So this note that this is not a problem. is just equal to the area of the region, okay? It's just the area of the region, no difference. So I, as long as you find the uh, first integral, then you, you solve the problem. Okay. All right, so we, we're assuming we use the x variable only. How can I change the the, uh, the above integral, the numerate for the y bar to an integral in the x variable, okay? So that's, uh, that, yeah, that is a problem here, yeah. okay? So let's try this again, and I'm going to, yeah, draw this picture. So what I'm going to do is, uh, The idea is that I still use the x, uh, use a, uh, yeah, I still uh, divide the interval into, uh, uh, into n sub intervals on the x variable, okay? Then I look at this piece. My point is I want to find out the center of that piece the center of that piece. 
Okay. So this is a, a yeah the estimate of the ascent of this piece. Okay. And this piece, the the a, a concentrate to the point, then project to y i. Okay. Yeah, that piece, assume it shrinks to one point, to the center of that piece, okay? Then you look on the y-axis, it looks like here, it's here. So what is the M? Uh, what did, yeah, so you have M, right? Right, M i is going to be, M i is going to be uh, the length. The total length dxi, right? Times delta xi. Yeah. Okay. What does that mean? The area of that, you know, then this region has the same, it's even density. Density equals to one, assume that. So the length times the width of that piece gives you the area of that piece. That piece, okay. Uh, concentrate to the one point that is the mass of that piece. Okay, so um, but how do you find the y? Y um, is just the center of that piece. So y uh, I'm going to y i is just the center of that piece. Okay, the center, the the middle point of that piece. Okay, the middle point of that piece. Okay. okay, so so now so now what you get is y bar should be should be the total right and estimate yeah the uh, approximate by right? It's also the integral. Okay. So here at the very beginning is m i y i, right? Okay. Then this is going to be m i is l x i delta x i, y i is the center of that point. Okay. So it depends. Okay. So we have to take rim. But it's easy to find out this, the middle point of that piece. Okay. Then the bottom part, mi, uh, is just lxi delta xi. So when you take the limit, what do you get? You still get the integral of lx dx. And this is the integral from still from a to b. But that time, there's this ln x times c and x and the dx. Okay, you still use the, the key point is we are going to use the x variable for the for the y coordinate of the center. Okay, we don't want to project the whole region into onto the y axis. That's it. Okay, so you needed to you needed to find out. Uh, the, the, the coordinate. So if you have a picture here, okay, and you project C to uh, A to D, A, B, an arbitrary point, you draw the line and you measure this, right? You also have to find out the, the, the center CX, okay? okay? Then, then you get uh, x bar and y bar, okay, by two formulas. The first one, you already know that. It's going to be the integral from a to b ln x dx, x. And the y bar is, the denominator is still the same. The numerator, 
the difference here is I think x is replaced by cx. Okay. okay, that's it. So only small change here, if you still want to use the x variable, the only small change is from x to the cx. cx is the, the middle point of this cross-section, the coordinates of the middle point of that cross-section. Okay, uh, the, the y-coordinate of the middle point of this cross-section. Okay. All right. So more precise, more special. Uh, we're going to find out the region described by two curves. Okay. And from C, uh, from A to B. Okay, can you can you get to the formula specific formula for the same curve map? Uh, all I have to do is just look at the cross section, arbitrary point, right? And from here, what do you get? L and X is the length of this cross section. Is the difference of these two points, two functions, right? That gives the length of that piece. Okay. Now, what is the center? The y coordinate of the of the of the middle point of that piece. Okay, and this is a this is a going to be g of x, right? This is going to be f of x. The middle point is here. How do you find the middle point? C x is here, so it's half of f of x minus g of x. Okay. Uh, a plus because the middle point is plus. Get them together. Then, then we the, we plug them into the above formula, you get you get all. Of it. Okay. Yeah. So x bar is going to be integral from a to b f of x minus g of x dx, and uh, and here you have to put f of x minus g of x dx, right? And the y bar is a little bit tricky here. The product of this two. The product of this two is f minus g times f plus g. So it'll be f squared minus g squared. That's why when you, you will see a formula like that, you will say f squared minus g squared. Okay. This is how the formula comes from. Right, uh, let's do exercise, when exercise. Uh, okay, so here's an example. Okay, find uh, the centroid of the region. Okay, bounded by x plus y equals 2 and x equals y squared. Okay, step one, you have to draw the region. Step two, you have to decide which variable we're going to use. Okay. Uh, X equals Y, Y equals X. Maybe I, I, I begin with the Y equals X square because that will be a little bit easier because we already have the formula, okay? Uh, y equals X square, okay? Slide two. <coughs> Draw the graph. X plus Y, X, Y plus X, right? X plus Y equals two. And it has slope of negative one y equals x squared. It's here. Okay. So that's the intersection point. And this is the region we're trying to find the central.
when I look at the picture, I think the center is somewhere here, right? The x variable should be negative. The y variable should be, of course, should be positive, right? It's more, more region, right? More area on the left hand side than the right hand side. So the center should be shifted a little bit from away from the y axis to the left side. And that gives, you know, this is a simple observation. Okay, how can I solve the problem? I'm going to put, I have to find the two intersection points. Okay, two intersection points. Uh, find the intersection points. Intersection points. Okay. Intersection points. So x plus x squared minus two equals zero. You know, I plug x squared for y into the first equation. Then you have an x plus one x minus two equal no, x plus two minus one. Okay, just fact it. Yeah. So x equals one, x equals negative two. I think it's clear, right? One and the one, negative two and the four. Okay. So you get two points in the section point. So how to find uh, how to find uh, the formula? I just set up an inter. I'm not going to evaluate. Okay. The idea is that the interval is between when I'm going to use the x variable, not use the y variable. So the, you have to determine which variable you're going to use for the integral. I'm going to only use the x variable. Okay. If you use the x variable, then take for an arbitrary x because it's easy to calculate l and x. Okay. So the equation y equals 2 minus x here. This is a y equals x squared. So what is a I wanted to use my mess. Okay, find the length of the cross section. That is a difference. Okay, that is the difference of the two functions. Then, can I find the center of the y corner, right? The middle point. So, CX is going to be average value of this okay that is the y middle point of the of that cross section the y coordinate of that cross section okay that will be the average value of this two then that okay the next step is to write down all the integrals right this is the integral of from negative two to one 2 minus x minus x squared dx. That's ln x. x times ln x. Okay. So that is all x variable. The y variable, the denominator is still the same. Uh, the numerate, I think, is cx times ln x. So half of 2 minus x plus x squared and two minus x minus x squared dx. Okay. So if you have a time, you can evaluate this integral. No problem. They're all polynomials. Okay, but the important part is how do you set up an integral here? Okay. okay, so the only difference is you see, this this is a this is a right, and this part is a C of X. This is the L and X. Right. Yeah. yeah. So C X is. Uh, middle point the y value y coordinate of 
the middle point, okay, at x, okay, the 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 middle point of the of the of the line the line segment, okay. So that's the reason you, you divide by two, you know, this is a point, that is a point. And uh, between these two points, that's the middle point, right? All right, so the next one, uh, okay. this is a, a curve, uh, y equals one minus x square, x equals square one minus y, and so here's a one, here's one, right? Now, for this one, uh, just set up the integral for, for the x for, for the center, right? For the centroid, set up an integral for the centroid. If you understand the idea, you can set up a two integrals. Use two different variables, x variable, y variable. Okay. Uh, so for the for the for the x one, right? This is a point x. This is a lx. So you just need to write down uh, x bar is going to be integral from zero to one ln x dx, integral from one and x times ln x dx, okay? So what is ln x? It's just the function, one minus x squared. Okay, and this is the x times one minus x squared dx. Now for the y, coordinate of the center. You can use the same idea. You don't need to use the x variable. You get the same result, okay? So let's go back to the picture here. Okay, here's x bar, y bar. So what they do is you just take an arbitrary value for y, you measure this z and the y. And uh, then the center, the y coordinate of the center is going to be from zero to one L and y dy. Okay. You will you will get the same result. Right? So you have to of course the L and y in this case, here in this case, L and X is one minus x squared. But in this case, you have to get the x value, so one minus y. Okay, for each given y. So this is going to be integral. This is the correct answer. Okay. First of all, I want to tell you this is the same result. Okay, one minus y dy equals from zero one minus x dx, okay? It calls the area. Doesn't matter which one you're gonna use. You end up with the same result is the area of the region, okay? And that is gonna be x, I think it's one minus one third, it's gonna be two thirds, okay? Yes, it's two thirds. So it's the same. The only difference is the new one, right? You know, uh, for the y variable, I use a y variable. For the y bar, I use a y variable. And the same idea. For the x bar, I use the x variable. But can I use the y x variable for the y bar? Yes, no problem. 
So the same is out. Okay, and I'm still using the x variable to get the y. Okay, so what are we going to do here? So this is x, ln x. The same ln x is going to be 1 minus x squared. The center, okay, the center, c and x, the coordinate of the center of the middle point is going to be half of 1 minus x squared, okay? Half. The bottom part is uh, at the or origin, right? Half. So, so you will get the so y bar according to another formula. It's still ln x dx. This is it, right? It's going to be ln x times cx. <laughs> So this is uh, another expression. So what I'm trying to say is that uh, since the denominator is both equal, equal to area, right? This is going to be two thirds. So I claim this this y bar is that y bar. So the integral of zero this should be equal to the integral of this. Practically the same. Otherwise, you get different coordinates. <laughs> Uh, but that one is easy to fix than the other one. The other one, how do you fix the other one? You can do that, right? But you have to use substitution. I, I don't think, well, almost the same. Yeah, maybe use uh, the left one is easier if you use substitution because you don't need to get the complicated polynomials. Okay? So you can use a, a substitution. Let's U to be DY, right? Then this integral is going to be when y this is one when y equals one to zero, and uh, y is going to be one minus u right, and that's a square root u. Okay, and dy is negative du. Okay, so you can change the variable from zero to one one minus u u to the one half du, then. Then you find the entire derivative of this function. It's going to be 2 over 3u to the 3 over 2, 2 over 5u, and then u to the 5 over 2. Okay, so the answer, yes, is going to be 2 over 3 minus 2 over 5. Okay, that's going to be 15. So 15 or 4 is answer. But you can also uh, calculate the other one. I'm pretty sure this integral, if my calculation uh, is correct, give the same answer. Okay. okay, let's do it. You know, I just say different formulas. It's going to be 1 minus 2x squared plus x to the fourth power. Okay. Totally different function, integrals. It's going to be antiderivative okay. and then you just plug one okay. what do you get uh, and as them together it's 8 over 15, which is 4 over 15. Great, it's the same answer. See that? <laughs> it's a major correct. So we have uh, using two different, sometimes you can use the two different variables for the for calculating the, uh, the x bar, y bar, okay? Because, because it's easy to project the region to axis and then also to the y axis, like this one, like this parabola. This is a this region is determined by the parabola. Then let's go back to this problem again, right? So you are given the region bounded by this this uh, parabola up and downward. But then it's easy to express this parabola using y equals one minus x squared. Also, you can use x equals square one minus y. But when you come to calculate the center of mass. Right, you have to calculate x bar, y bar. How do you get x bar, y bar? 
x bar is this formula. This is standard formula. So you have to calculate the, yeah, this is the x bar, right? And uh, if x bar is calculated by this formula, then the y bar uses a similar formula because you project the region onto the y axis. Then you have to calculate, uh, find the length, the horizontal length of the cross section. Length of the horizontal cross section. Okay. So then just, just find the formula for L Y. I already find it. It's totally different formula, right? Then add them put together, you get uh, two two expressions, one for x bar and one for y bar. But in a similar form, exactly similar form. Okay, similar form, similar formula. Okay. And uh, but then uh, how many integrals you have to figure? This is the two, three, because the denominator also in the expression, the denominator actually is the area of the region. So doesn't matter which one you pick it. Then, but I already show you. You know, I just said that. I did not even check these two integrals. Okay, I'm guaranteed those two integrals get the same value as two thirds. That is the area of the region. Then. I also show you another formula for y bar. The, the difference, yeah, this is another formula for the y bar using the integral, using the, uh, using the integral, you know, this is still integral nx dx. The other one is cx nx dx, okay? So using that formula, then you use a x variable, still use the x variable. So the diff numerators already know that two thirds, but the denominator uh, the, uh, the denominator is the same, right? Same value. The numerator looks quite different, okay? But I claim that they are the same. Using different formulas, you get the same value for the numerator. So that's a claim, okay? I claim that equal. Then I calculate the one on the left hand side. I got got four of 15, then I calculate the right hand side, the integral on the right, I still get four of 15. So this is a, this is a, a this is mathematics, you don't need, you know, doesn't matter which way you go, you get the same result, okay? Right, so that's it for today's class, and we're gonna have a review class on Friday, and, uh,